Grand rising to y'all. I hope you're all super grateful to be alive. Look, I came out and I did a live when I was walking the dog a while ago, but look, somebody has reached out to me this morning. So instead of, I, I asked the person, look, instead of just responding to you and you be the only person to benefit from it, I'll go back live and I'm going to explain it. So guys, this is an added bonus live for you guys all this morning because I think that this is going to be beneficial for a lot of you. And this is my intention every time I come out here and do a live is that you guys get the benefits of just that. So, look, a lot of people get stuck questioning, why me? Why me? Why couldn't I have parents that love me unconditionally? And why did I have to live this? And why did I have to live that? Well, I have one answer for all of you. Why not you? What makes you as an individual exempt from all of the experiences of life? You see, the biggest way that I was able to get over what I've had to live in my life is to look at it for what it is. Seriously, why not me? I am amazingly me. So you all are amazingly you. <laughs> Fueled by an infinite, unconditional love that loves you. No matter what you're doing. But you accepted your life experience. Before you were given it. You weren't randomly handed an experience without you consenting to it all. So, it's not like the most high God, as you would some call. Listen, it's not like this consciousness said, okay, you, this is what you're going to do, and uh, you got no choice, and go do it. No. You willingly, knowingly took on everything that you were going to have to live in this experience, but you also agreed to learning how to find your way back to love. We're all fueled by it. It's an energetic force of life, which everything ever created is fueled by, which we are all interconnected and we are all tapped into it all at the same time. All of us. Everybody is uniquely them because your perspective, your energy, who you are is genuinely needed on this planet. For this massive shift. So how do you get over all of that stuff? Well, the first thing you can realize is that it no longer exists in the physical tense. You have to, okay, right now, I want you, I want you to focus your energy to right now. What really exists right now outside of what you see other than the memory of any of it? What really exists? What you see to be real? Or what you feel? To be real. So I'm going to help you guys distinguish that this morning. So 
what you see to be real. Okay? Is very different from what you feel to be real. You can feel your table. So that's how you perceive it to be real. You see things. However you process that is what is making it real for you. Now, outside of that, what's real? Only the feelings of it. So, what do I mean by this? Well, what's real to you? Your family, your friends, your outside, whatever it is you do. But unless it is right in front of you right now, it only exists in feeling. And this is what I want you guys to be able to differentiate between. This is how you are going to understand what you are actually manipulating and creating into the scene for yourself. Okay? Now... Everything starts with a creative idea, but then needs the power of your being to turn it into a thought process, into a creative pattern, into, okay, to produce it to be real. It starts with feeling. So, anything from your past that you are not feeling through to figure out what learning you will need to take from that, you will continuously, repetitively relearn it until you get it. Okay? So, when people get caught in repetitive cycles, it is for their unique learning because they can't get it because they're not seeing it. Why don't they see it when they're learning it and living it? Because they get too caught in the feeling of it all instead of simply seeing it. Okay? So, instead of getting caught in how life has made you feel, Switch that, transmute that feeling within you to insight. Look at it. Look at it with no feeling attached. You see the correlation now that I'm making with you guys? There should be nothing invoked within you, no matter what you are seeing or living or learning unless you allow it to do just that. But when you allow logic and your state of energy to be from a loving point, there is constant clarity, zero confusion for your own being. This is why it is so important. Okay. Okay. I'm being instructed to drop it a little differently for those that didn't quite follow me through that. So because I'm being told that there are many that aren't going to follow what I just said. So I have to explain it a little deeper. All right. So guys, when you're seeing stuff, you're just seeing it. All right. Now, how you process it is going to invoke certain feelings within you versus the things we don't see. So what do I mean? Like, look, anybody that you don't see that you love in your heart, will you feel the love that you have for these beings, whether they are with you or not? Right? Simply that. 
So things that are not actually visible to us, we actually induce feelings about from thought alone. So this is how I'm being explained to drop it to you. Okay? Now when you understand that aspect of it, because... Uh, okay. Like our parents. My dad is saying, use me. Use me. Come on. Use me. Just use me. Just, okay. Like my dad. I don't see him. But I feel him. Through me. See what I mean? I'm not with my grandchildren right now. But I feel them. I don't see them. But I feel them. Through what? Through the love that I have for them. Right? So, I physically am not with my children because they're grown adults now. But, it is real to me because of how I hold them in my heart. So, what you guys have to understand is whether we see it or not, the only things that we are feeling are the things that we give the meaning to, which induce feelings within us. Okay? So, the easiest way to get over everything that you've ever had to live in your life is to realize it in the same magnitude of what I just explained. So what do I mean by that? The same way you think about your children when they're not with you and you feel them through love well this is the same feeling that you must project onto anything you've had to live in your life love the experience no matter how hard it was for you to live no matter what it is whatever feeling that you are inducing within your own being is your choice alone. Seriously. Seriously. It doesn't matter what the experience is. You, you got through it, and if you haven't yet, it's because you haven't learned what you're supposed to learn out of it for yourself, nobody else. Because we all have different learning. And our magnitude of learning is according to our skill set we've acquired and the magnitude of what we've endured. Because like I tell you, the more that you can get through was the more that you can handle. And the more you can handle, well, the more is given to you to do just that. I'm given a lot to handle. Why? Because of the magnitude of who I am. And I can do it all. Why? Because I'm me. There's not another me on the planet. And it doesn't matter... There are many on the planet who are enlightened and spiritually awakened and they have their own gifts and their own talents, but they are not me. So there's zero comparison to anybody on the planet. You see, when the Most High, which masses of people call God, well, when He certifies you, you don't need an institution on the planet to. And you are very capable, very capable, 
of remembering the things that induce the loving feeling within you and be that, allow that to override and transmute any kind of energy within you about anything you've ever had to live. Because it really in the physical, well, look around you. Stop what you're doing right now and notice what is around you in your vision sight. Look around you. Nothing else exists outside of that other than what you perceive to be real and allow feeling into. So it's the same thing for your past. And it's the same thing for your future. Nothing exists but right now. Because the only place that any of the past or the future exists is in your own head. Wrong place to be. Clean that shit out. <laughs> Delete. Hey, Joshua. Great morning to you. Sending you loads of love. Hey, so let's do it together because I won't even ask you if you did it. We'll do it together. Guardian angels, ancestors, <laughs> archangels, the most high. I ask you all. Protect this guy's love and light today. In everything that he does, everything that he says. Guide him. Show him all of the lessons with all of the signs clearly with clarity. Guide him today to get the greatest opportunity for himself possible for his healing. Many thanks. Josh, I'm sending you loads of love, buddy. Filled with that, you got all kinds of guidance, all kinds of greatness, all kinds of everything you need to have a magical day. Protect your energy. Seriously. Because, uh, yeah, you got great energy. Okay, buddy? So, guys, look. The explanation of all of that, I really hope you guys... Something clicked this morning. You really have to understand that there is only right now. That's all that exists. Is your moment right now. Now... Another thing I'm going to show you guys this morning. When I tell you guys, notice what you're noticing. Look. Being self-aware of who you are. This is going to be a perfect example. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look. I want you guys to understand how much you are not noticing your own being and how unaware you are of your own self. Okay? Why do I say that? Because of this. Okay, big head. Thank you. Now, unless you bring, well, because you're paying attention this way. So let me start. Thank you. Okay. Let me start like this. Because you are paying your attention right now to this life. Okay. This is where you are putting your focus and your energy. Now, in doing that, hmm. <laughs> Are you feeling your right foot? No, you're not. Well, for a moment, 
put your focus on your right foot. Put your focus on your right foot to the point where you thank your right foot for carrying the complete weight of your being. Feel your toes. Move your toes. Appreciate your foot. I bet you you can feel your foot more than you did before I told you to put your focus there. Now, this is what I mean about you need to notice things about your own being all the time. You need to be conscious of your whole being all the time. So, instead of putting that focus externally and paying attention to all the things in your life that do not make you feel good, you stop that. Now you have a conscious choice to take the attention of your being and focus that inwardly to transmute whatever you are feeling and giving life at any given moment. This is where people get caught up in emotional reactions and reliving things and all kinds of stuff because they don't notice what they are supposed to be paying attention to. Okay? And this is the big shift that somebody has to make within their own being. That cannot be forced on you. But you have to take the, your own attention and energy and shift it inwardly and analyze things from a totally different perspective, understanding that whatever you are feeling, it is by your own manipulation of your energy, by your choices. You can choose better. How do you do that? You look for the learning. There is to be no poor me syndrome or why me in any of that. Why not you? You are uniquely you. Your capacities are uniquely yours. <laughs> There's only one of you. There's no knockoffs. Do you understand how much value you have now? You can't be replicated. You can't be duplicated. Big head. Okay, honestly, dog, you know what? We're going to have to figure that out, eh? Because I don't want to get upset with you, but uh, if you don't start listening, hey, it's only for your own good. You don't want to hear you're going to feel because you're going to continue doing that and you're the one that's going to make yourself suffer. So stop because you're not hurting me, you're hurting you. Yeah, sorry. I preached to my dog like I preached to a human because, hey, she's a soul too. And guess what? She understands more than half of the adults I talk to on a daily. Straight up. Sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not sorry. That's facts. And anybody who knows my dog and knows me knows that too, factually. Can't talk to my dog with one word command. She'll look at you like you're totally not capable of talking. She'll like, who is this clown? <laughs> so guys, back to notice what you're noticing. But notice about your own being, you understand? So these things that you keep thinking about, they're not relevant to the now. So the things that uh, you've lived in your life that you personally by choice 
keep entertaining in your mind, keep reliving within your being, you're inducing self-harm by doing all of that. And this is what you guys have to realize. It is self-abusive to keep reliving these harmful emotions and harmful states by thought alone. Because what I've just made you guys aware of is outside of your vision, what else is real right now for you? Nothing other than what you are holding on to by meaning alone. See what I mean? So yeah, I'm not expecting you to just, oh, let it go and oh, just get over it. No, we don't just get over it. We need to work through it. And in doing so, oh, the clarity that you gain. You know, and there's so many people that, oh, I, I, I just, okay, well, no, no. You have to. You have to face it for yourself. This is what the courage of loving yourself is. Be brave for you and face the things that are harnessing you to not feeling right by your choice alone. You don't have to do that. And yeah, we all have things that are external that in all reality, if you are living right now in your moment, none of these things can affect you. None of them. Just give me a sec. Just give me a sec. Okay, big head. I don't think you're taking me serious, and I think you need to you need to stop. Okay? Come and I'll put on something on you, but you need to stop this. I don't want to hear it again. There. Sorry about that. I had to deal with my dog. She's got, she's, she's allergic to the cold. So every time we come in, she's extremely itchy and she doesn't like me to put the, the, I've got bag bomb and stuff that I put on her, but she doesn't like the feeling of it. So if I put that on her, she's constantly rolling around and it makes her so uncomfortable. So that's why I just had to talk to her the way I did, but she listens. She understands. Actually, she gets it a lot quicker than any human does that I've ever had to really deal with. So, guys, look. So this is what I'm telling you. The easy way to get over what you've had to live is understand that you are noticing these things for a reason, primarily. They're coming up for a very good reason. Because these are things that you have to heal and let go of, factually. So... It doesn't matter what's coming up or what you have to face. Have the courage to do it. Because once you face it, you accept it for what it is. You notice how that experience made you feel. Well, then correct that feeling. That's okay. It's okay to have had the experience of it. It's okay to have felt the way you did during it because it was supposed to guide you to not put yourself in those positions again. It's very simple when you really take the learning out of it. But you can't get stuck repetitively Telling yourself, oh, well, why did I have to live that? Or, oh, uh, no, I hate that, or I hate this. No, because you're inducing self-harm on yourself. Because you are actually pushing those effects into your being. And in all reality, like I just explained to all of you, if it is not right now in your now, right around you, well, it only exists by the meaning and the memory of it all. Okay? And to, you know, it's like with PTSD, all right? People relive 
the experience of the trauma because they cannot face it and correct the installation of how it made them feel during it. So to the magnitude of which somebody was traumatized in the event is to the same magnitude of the imprint it's going to leave in your being. Through what? How it made you feel. So, bon matin, tu devras en faire en français. Mais tu peux les faire, en... mettons traduit. Je m'excuse, je t'adore Manon. Je t'envoie de l'amour. Hey, hey, I miss you. I really do, I miss you. <laughs> Mais, c'est une chose que, faut que je pense à ça. Parce que je suis bien capable, je le sais. Mais c'est une chose que j'ai jamais faite. <rire> je l'ai jamais faite en français. Mais euh, peut-être euh, ça serait une idée. Hein? Mais tu peux rentrer dans tes euh, settings. Puis tu peux le mettre euh, pour une traduction. Hein? Now I understand. <rire> I love you. Non, mais tu peux les traduire. Je sais, il y a une, une façon, je ne sais pas, parce qu'il y a une autre madame que je connais, que j'adore aussi. Puis elle, elle parle seulement en français. D'abord pour elle, elle m'écoute, mais dans ses affaires, elle peut les traduire. Je ne sais pas comment le faire, mais je vais m'informer aujourd'hui. Puis je vais te lancer un message, là, un peu cet après-midi. Puis je t'envoie plein d'amour pour ta journée. <rire> Yeah, so all of you guys that didn't know that I speak French, yes, I do. My grandmothers and my f father spoke French. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and, and you know what? I wasn't even in school yet. And my grandmother, when I was, she was taking care of me, she refused to speak to me in English. Because she told me that I had to learn to get through this life. So I'm really grateful. Yeah, and now she's in spirit and she, they, she's a kick-ass woman, I tell you that. Woo, boy, she feels me, so. <laughs> Guys, look, so look, I'll get back to the live. Honestly, You guys all have the capacity within your beings to not allow the memory of what you've had to live affect you to the extent that it is affected. Hey, Carol, great morning. I love you. Love you loads. I've been up for a couple of hours. You know, I was just thinking about you guys before, too. I, are you guys still out at the farm? Let me know if you are. Love you. Have a great day. I'll see you later if you are. Um, so yeah, guys, you do have the capacity to override what these memories have imprinted you with, because the only what, the only reason why you remember them and, oh, cool. You're there. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm coming up. I'll be at the farm for sure today. For sure. For sure. And then now that I know you're up, well, hey, I'll head out even earlier. So I'll see you soon. I'll bring some coffee. <laughs> How do you take the coffee, Carol? Let me know. I'll pick it up on the way through. I'll stop at Tim's, grab some coffee for us. Okay? Um, so guys, like I was saying, the only reason why you remember these things is to the magnitude of which they made you feel during the experience of what they, it was that you lived. So, whether it's good or bad or whatever it is, I have coffee. Just bring you. <laughs> I know you have coffee. I love you. I'll see you today. I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. I'll be out to the farm for sure today. For sure. I'll be. I'm going to come out this morning. I'll have something to eat before I break out. And I've walked Big Head already, but I'll make sure I walk her again because I'll be gone for a couple hours. And, uh, yeah, I'll head out. I'll head out. So guys, look, the memory, whether it's good or bad. So I want you guys to notice these things. So I'm going to take you to it. Remember a time right now 
of something that made you feel really, really good. Remember that time. Because there must have been a time in your life that really overflowed your cup with joy. Do you see it? That memory of it? Do you remember how it made you feel? How joyful it made you feel? Breathe that in and breathe that out. Now you feel the effects of feeling that memory. There is no way that you don't. Well, big head. So now on the flip side, I would like you to recall a memory right now that was devastating to you. Recall a memory within you that you're holding on to right now that did not make you feel right. And you're going to feel the effects of just that. Now, having felt the memory of the joyful memory. Now, cancel that thought. Clear the blackboard of the devastating moment. Clear it, clear it, clear it, clear it. Don't hang on to it. Now, bring back the memory. Actually, before you do that, as I'm being instructed to stop, right there and throw some learning this way. Okay, so listen. You felt that joyful state in your memory? Did you feel the depletion of your energy within your own being when you went to the state of what you were feeling that was devastating? If you put your attention to these things, well, you felt the effects of just that. And you felt the joy of your being from that memory, diminish immediately. Now, oh. these things that didn't make us feel good, I want you to understand it is the way you perceive the experience of it. Now, I want you guys, look, I'm going to teach you right now how to transmute energy. Now, go to a happy moment. Go to a happy moment. I want you to look at a happy moment and a happy memory. And it's uniquely yours. Everybody's going to have a different memory. But we can all work with our memories. Nobody is different when it comes to this stuff. We all have our own memories. We all have our own feelings. But we all can do this. Now, feel the effects of the joy of that memory. Something you really love to live. You have the capacity to turn every one of your memories of your life experience into this same joyful feeling. People would say, yeah, right, that's impossible. No, because I have. I have taken every one of my memories of my past experience that were harmful, that were painful, and I have put them into the same joyful state of the memory that I've just tried to 
the, the effects of the memory I just tried to trigger within you of a joyful state now. How did I do this? Well, I transmuted the energy and the emotional imprint that was stamped in my brain of these events. Now, how do you turn a very hard and painful situation into a joyful one? Well, because when you were living that moment and that memory, did you know that there was going to be highs and lows of life? No. Did you know that every experience of your life was for learning? No. Did you know that how others treat you is a reflection of them and not you? No. Did you know then that some things are just out of your control? No. Well, when you had to live that experience, you didn't know all of that. So, of course, it's going to make you feel the way it did then. But now, being who you are, you know better than to even allow that memory to remain stamped within you the way it does because half the time it should have never made us feel like that. But it did at that moment for this exact learning in it. We don't live things for no reason. But you cannot correct the emotional stamp that it leaves within you as a being if you do not have the courage to look at it for yourself. Because what happens is we, we don't want to think about it. We lock it away in our mind. We think that we've gotten over it. And we really have it. You've pushed these emotional lock trapped emotions into the core of your being, which all of your belief systems come from. Because what you believe today is a result of your experience of what you've lived. And nothing but. And this is why you are so capable of changing the way things have made you feel in the past. How do you do that? You look at it. You accept that that is not who you are today. You would not allow those things to happen or even if the things that were out of our control. Like there's a lot of things that happened to me from a very small child that were completely out of my control. I wasn't old enough or big enough to defend myself in those situations. And there were no adults defending me or keeping me safe. Or none of it would have happened. But that doesn't affect me the way people think it does. For me, that made me understand the evil of the world. That made me understand how much I was needed to be born <laughs> in all of it. There's so much good that comes out of every bad situation I've ever lived. I've lived so much in my life only for learning to help others with. To help others get through stuff. So yeah, I've had to live a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. But in living all of that, I've learned, I've learned, I've learned so much. But if I can't even look at my experience and take the learning from it, out of all of it, well, then I'm inducing my own self-harm within it all. Literally, because it's all for learning. Every single bit of it. So if you're not taking the time to really learn and notice within your own being what you are doing to your own self 
through the thoughts that you want to have and not correct, through the effects of that, through speaking the way you do, through eating. Look, there's effects to everything that we do. And to which you put your efforts, you will reap the benefits of just that. So if you're putting the efforts into destructive ways, well, you're still going to feel the exact magnitude of the effects of that. So what do I mean about destructive ways? The biggest destruction for one's being is the way that they operate their own being. Through thought alone, through thought and belief about their own self. When you realize who you are and you know who you are and nobody can tell you who you are because nobody really knows who you are other than you. Through the free will of your own choices. So, see this is where there's been a big confusion with humanity is we... We've been conditioned and programmed to accept what everybody else believes about us as our truth without finding our own truth of who we are and allowing that truth to be known to the world. See, that's where the big discrepancy is when it comes to me. The world can think what they want and the world can think they know who I am, but I know who I am. And I do not accept the opinions of others to define me, to govern my life, to... I don't make choices from anybody else's opinion or facts other than my own. Nobody knows what's right for me other than me. This is the point where you guys have to get to. And you know, so many people are so scared to embrace and own their own being because of what the opinions of others. Is that really what's right for you? No. Don't stop your growth, your learning, your healing because it's uncomfortable to somebody else. There's a lot of things that you can actually transmute. What is transmutation? Changing it. Changing the energy of it. Well, when you choose to not beat yourself up from anything you've had to live or any reaction to anything you've ever had, like a lot of people sit and say, oh, Toby, your reactions are, you know, sometimes. No, it's not my reactions. It's that there's a cause and an effect to everything, eh? And trust me when I tell you, people that are loving with me receive that 10 times back from me. But people that are fucked up with me? Wait, you think I'm the type of person to, oh, ho, ho, that's okay? Guys, the yin and yang of all things, eh? Angels and demons work together. So, what do I mean by that? Well, instead of allowing demons to control and govern me from my dark side, I said it on a live a long time ago. <laughs> my demons now work for me. They're not attacking me. And so do my angels. I got a huge spirit team, and that's why I'm respected by angels and demons. Because I have conquered mine with unconditional love. Sounds crazy, but it's the truth. My demons can't haunt me when they are working with me. I tell you, the certain strengths that you find in darkness, you don't find in light. And vice versa. And that's facts. So all the good in you brings you so so much greatness, but so does all of the what you would call bad. And this is why I encourage everybody to remove blocked emotions, first of all. Transmute that stuff, because by holding on to that stuff 
and allowing these effects to be felt by your being because these situations only exist within you and in your life from memory alone. Factually. So what is the memory of it? Whatever you've given it as a memory. So the same way you've allowed it to affect you that way of any magnitude, you can rewrite what you're feeling and thinking about that whole thing. Because who you are today is very much different from who you were when you had to live that experience. So this is why I encourage everybody to tap into who they are now and use the power of their being to have the courage to look and notice the things within their own being that they're hanging on to that is literally self-abusive to them. Because people don't realize that by governing themselves and their belief systems and their thoughts and their words and their speech by these emotional trapped imprints in our brain, you don't realize how you are abusing the shit out of your own being. How because of the effects of what it's doing to your body. Simple. People get sick by thought alone. Do you realize that? So if your body can get sick by just your thoughts, well, imagine what these trapped experiences in your brain that you're not working out are doing to you. It's not a joke. On a chemical, physical level, which in turn restricts you completely from being able to tap into your highest potential. Literally. This is why I encourage everybody to have the courage to go and face what they need to correct within their being. And it's not about eliminating good or bad. It's about putting the understanding and the focus and the light in the dark of your being to correct what is shackling you to not feeling good and the effects of that. Seriously. I can't stress it enough. I've mastered myself and my being. There is not one life experience that I have had in my life up until this morning that affects me in any way. When I tell you guys that I have merged my yin and yang, my darkness and light, in other words... I have shown my demons all the unconditional love that they needed to work with me. I tell you, there's strength in that. Strength in that that you will not find in the light. So, what did I do? Well, I embraced my angels too. And said, yo, huh, demons and angels of my being that I've lived from experience, you guys are going to work for me now together. Huh, group hug. Make friends, get to know each other, and work with each other, because I love y'all and need y'all. That's what makes me powerful. I've found the neutrality in my being. There is nothing that can work against me in my experience Or within my being. I fully embrace the power of who I am. And I embody the infinite unconditional love that fuels me. No matter what I have to live. 
See what I mean? You all have the power to do that. I'm going to remind you all today, there's no good or bad in any situation unless you're comparing it to somebody else's or something else. Stop comparing things. You are uniquely you. There's not another like you on this planet. You are not a knockoff version. There could never be a knockoff of you. Never. So, guys, you know, I had to come back out here because I really appreciate this individual coming to me and saying, Toby, look, I need some help with this. And I said, okay, look, not without, I don't want to just help you with this because this is something that a lot of people could use. And they were willing to get the learning from me through this instead of going one-on-one. -on -one. Because I had to ask them, yo, do you mind if we don't do this one-on-one? -on -one? Let me go out there and I'll do a live on it so that everybody can get the teaching from it. And they said, sure, no problem. So this is exactly what I did. So for you guys that didn't catch the beginning of this live, go back and watch the replay. You guys have missed... Quite a bit of information in between, I'm sure. Anyway, guys, I've got things I'm going to do. And, uh, yeah, i got to get... I'm, I'm heading to uh, Ontario today. So, I am going to get up and organize myself and get my day going and go do just that. Road trip! <laughs> hey, Carol, love you lots. I'll see you soon. Um... Yeah, guys, have an amazing day. And I'm going to tell you guys again, do nothing that you don't love to do. And you know how many people are saying, oh, well, I have to. No, you don't have to do fuck all that your soul or your being doesn't want to do. Just like anything else in life. So guys, I encourage you all, Set that high vibe. How do you do that? Be grateful for your experience. To begin with. Let's just start with that. And if you haven't voiced it, give thanks and praise that you're awake and alive to even live out today. Find the gratitude in that primarily. It shifts everything. Tell yourself you're amazing. And you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, how am I amazing? I've done nothing great. Actually, you have. Actually, you have. You know what that greatness is? You've been you, uniquely you. That's amazing. All right. Find the greatness in your day. How do you do that? Well, live in the now. Like I explained at the beginning of the live, listen, there's no past and there's no future. There's only the now, literally. So love it and let that be your fuel for the memories that you're going to have of the past. I tell you guys all to have heart filling moments for a very valid reason. So that you can fill your mind with great memories. Because that's all you have from it. Doesn't matter what you're seeing around you. Guys, I love you all. Have a great day. Set that high vibe. And enjoy your day. To its fullest. Don't let anything stop you. A lot of people say, oh, well, I have to do this. Oh, I have to do that. No, you don't. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. So do all the stuff that you genuinely want to do. Because I made a pact with myself 
that that's exactly what I'm doing for the rest of my life. I will never again do anything with my time, my energy, or my day that I don't love doing. I won't do that for anybody on the planet. Because I love me. Guys, get on, get on board with that for your own being. Don't make excuses why you need to settle for less than that. I love you all. Have a super great day. Peace. <laughs>